So when the Virgin Tech shoot, uh, shootings happened, almost like 14 years ago, almost at this time, uh, there was a lot of rumors flying that it was a right person, it was a black person, a Muslim, all that. And then uh, when the rumors start, when we got the news around that it was an Asian, I was talking to a few friends of mine who were Asian, and uh, we said to ourselves, oh, we're going to get hunted. We're going to get ridiculed by others. That Asian killed everyone in Virginia Tech. Oh, my God, and such. And that was the first time I believed that uh, this is n- we're not in a safe place basically. Uh, so as you heard of the news last week about the eight people who were killed in a, let's just say it's a hate crime, uh, a racist hate crime by a guy who says it was a sex addiction. And most of them, like the people they were killed were like over 40. One of them was like under 30, under 35, like 33 years old. And <clears throat> It's just so weird. And then another strange part about this is the sheriff saying that the guy had a bad day. And there has been background of the guy uh, kind of shady on that aspect of it. So you, you could, uh, I could easily say, like, oh, we need more Asian advocacy, protect Asians, uh, stop Asian hate and such. People should do that at the bare minimum. Basically give respect to everyone else. My gist of this talk is... Why is this? Why are we continuing this? And this is going to surprise some people on this one. I'm not upset by the murderer. Of course, he is a terrible person as such. He's been evangelized that Asians are bad because of the quote-unquote Chinese flu. Because this guy uh, basically says it's the China flu. It's the Wuhan flu. And just coerced everything on that one. Found a reason to serve his purpose. Quote unquote. And then I'm not going to blame the messenger as well. The messenger is trying to do the job. And is trying to provoke people. This is where I felt most of this. Where we are right now. Is the broadcasters. And that. And why I mean broadcasters. And we're talking about media. And we're going to talk about two separate things here. So the first one is the broadcast media. The the mainstream media, the C- the CBS, the ABCs, the Fox, the the NBCs of that ilk, and the problem with them is that they're looking for co- conflict. As you see, uh, that's why I'm taping this right now on a Sunday morning because Sunday morning shows have been crap because it's mostly been taken care of by GOP because it's basically paying the corporations a lot. And just remember, these companies are a private corporation are part of a private corporation so those companies care about the profit more than the overall view of a better society and i think that's a a huge concern of this yeah as you see on these the sunday morning shows they're they're mostly right you don't see a lot of uh, diverse viewpoints and and these types of networks i think they're approved a little bit but not as much as we would like to believe in and we're stuck into this uh, old system that are the right people and such and that's why a lot of people are complaining about why are these uh, outlets are giving more credence to right people than the other side of things because the other side does vote and such is it that the right people have a lot of money that's probably some of the reason they assume that right people have this money so they can watch and they can give to them and such and it's just a weird conflict to it. Because if you're a corporation, you actually want to bring in the whole audience. And not only here in the U.S., but worldwide. And that's why China is a huge deal these days, because they got a billion people. Their economy is thriving, in a sort of sense. But they have covered everything in the sense. And most of their and their huge exports to different countries, especially in the United States. There's a huge flux of what's going on to it. And this is why there's not a lot of trust in the media because most of it is privatized and they have their own agenda. And that scares a lot of people. And that includes the Atlanta shootings uh, where people are discussing about the a person hate crime and such. Stop Asian hate. But 
are they doing anything? Yeah, are, why are you talking a lot about the the guy uh, who's doing the shooting instead of the eight people who got murdered? And it's it's a conundrum because they the corporations need conflict so people can watch their sh- their news shows and then ad revenue will kick in and such. So that's a one part of the scary process of it. Now, uh, the part the broadcast media I would also include public media, and that's the issue as well. Public media would help out uh, with everyone. The problem is the viewpoint of public media is that there's two sides, there's left and right. Of course, they want to handle multiple viewpoints, but they don't talk about what is the issue of it, the gist of it, and deal with it. And I think that's where the concern of public media is that they want to, they are the public, so they have to care about all the opinions, which is fair, but also they need to tell the truth of what's going on. And we're not getting any of this. I think it's clear now, like, we know, one, white supremacy. That's always going to be the big thing. But two, money. It is down to money. And why are these corporations want to do that? Well, as I mentioned, they're privatized, and they can do whatever they want. They just want to maximize this and then say something that they've done good real, but they they won't do it because it's not good for the bottom line. Now, the second part of the media aspect of it is social media, and this is, I think, the fault of all the social media companies. We're talking about Facebook, Twitter, like LinkedIn, also Instagram. And TikTok is included. And also this channel, I mean, this platform, the channel, what we're in, basically YouTube. Uh, these uh, Silicon Valley companies want to focus on free speech, that people have their free speech and such. But they don't know how to control it. They literally lost control because I remember on Twitter several years ago, like, Twitter was a popular platform back then, and people were using their voices. And it was great to connect them with people, but when they accepted uh, uh, bot, bots and tre- uh, bots and trolls, essentially that just ruined the discourse of Twitter itself. And people are arguing about one side and then the other, and this and that, and there was no policing of that. And I think the issue is basically the same thing as like in banking: it's too big to fail. Because these companies are making a lot of money, especially Facebook and Google. Uh, you got a bunch of billionaires close to it. Um, and then there's nothing to police it. Like, even if, if you're trying to police it, if you're trying to have a, a small team to do it, they can't handle it by themselves. So the issue, I think, is what to do with that. And so there has been talks about a private a public partnership with the government to help oversee the what's going on, what so the the officials can look at the the board and see who's saying what, what they need to do. Companies don't want to have control of that one because they want government in, intervention per se, and that's why there was a lot of talk. Uh, if you saw the segment on Stephen Colbert uh, last week, I believe was the um, a news where Silicon Valley companies are trying to go to Nevada to have their own utopian place, which I think that's kind of scary to think about that because what kind of utopia are they talking about? Are they talking about just anything goes, like no rules, no one gets arrested? That's kind of scary. And then we have to think in future prospects, is there a country that will allow this to come in? And you do know Silicon Valley will go on that one. Tech companies will, will aim at that one go to that country, get those people, and then they can do whatever they want. There is a lot of Asian uh, hate going on to it. I'm in more in a complex matter, you know, such a thing, because I'm, as you know from my last time, I'm Vietnamese. Um, South Vietnamese, uh, as my parents were born in Saigon. We're not saying Ho Chi Minh City. And this is where the conflict is, is that if you saw the uh, the January sixth uh, insurrection, there was a, the Vietnamese, the old Vietnamese flag, the three red lines, I mean, and the yellow and the yellow uh, flag background to it. They were showing that at the Capitol. My parents are very conservative. They represent South Vietnam. 
Uh, they're not that conservative. They're not that far wing of it. But they're they're very conservative, but they're not far wing on that end. And then there's Vietnam as it is. There's a red background, yellow star, and it's let's just say it is. It is a communist country now, although it has gotten much better. There's a lot of tourist attractions to it because the new generation of Vietnamese people over there are doing different things. Are thinking innovative ideas and also the government has done a better job at containing the uh pandemic than us uh here in the united states uh but it is still a communist country and then it can snap like that in an instant now there are some arguments about uh far east asian countries especially china but don't mess with the people i the people are wonderful they're doing their job it's the government side of China is where it becomes a huge issue because now it's become uh, more of an authoritarian government as Z, I believe uh, that's his name, um, is now trying to, now has full control and can do whatever he wants. So we're in, so I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in the middle where you have the old Vietnam, which is basically colonialism, French and such, and then People want like to have the old life back, and then you have the the new Vietnam, which is going on right now, which a lot of innovative stuff, but it's still run by a communist government, and I'm I'm not neither of those, so it's a scary proposition uh, of it, and it's, I expect a scary proposition for us Asians about what's going on in this country. So now people are saying China flu, Wuhan flu, uh, because they, they believe in their leader, quote unquote, um, talking this, and they can do the same thing. And that's just why I don't joke about others. I really do, unless they deserve it. Uh, especially the foreign president. You can joke on that one. But I really joke on people on that aspect. That's why I joke mostly on myself, because you can, I can take it. And... I can deal with the situation around it. But for the others, I don't know. And this is why I hate. The problem I think people have this issue is that they view the stereotype of what an Asian is supposed to be. We're mostly quiet about these issues because we don't want to cause any trouble. We just want to do the work. That's now out the window. We now have to speak out on this one. There are many ways to support Asian causes. I'll have tons of links below on this one. But also, I'll show tons of links of other YouTubers who are Asian, especially Fung Brothers, Mikey Chan, uh, Strictly Dumpling, Emmy Maid. Also, Dragon Call Games I talk about. Uh, Kevin is Asian. And then there's the Crane Couple, although they're not mostly focused on YouTube these days because of the pandemic, which is an obvious reason. But Julius is Asian. So you can follow them on Twitch or on Amazon, what channels they have there. So I'll, show, I'll give you all the links there to support Asian Americans. But it is a scary time to it. But also what's scary is that these corporations can do whatever they want. And to leave a final thought, power is a hell of a drug. And these corporations want that power, especially white people. But also, white people need to defend us. Because it's up to them. We're saying it. We're telling you the truth right now. Blacks, Asians, Spanish. Everyone's telling you the truth. It's up to you guys, the right people, to advocate us and then give us a fair society. That's up to you guys.